you to imagine a pet, you would probably think of a cat or a dog. But what about our other animal friends like horses, parrots, or fish? In my new book, Embroidered Animal Portraits, I teach you how to capture the likeness of our non-traditional animal friends with just a needle and thread. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Michelle Staub from Fitchy Sabbatical, and I've spent a majority of my embroidery career creating hand-stitched portraits of cats and dogs. After teaching myself embroidery and spending years honing my skills, I wrote my first book with CNT Publishing called Pet Portrait Embroidery, which has helped thousands of people all over the world create their own stitched portraits of cats and dogs. Now I'm exploring the diverse world of pet portraits that goes beyond cats and dogs. Our feathery and scaly friends are just as special and important as your typical furry friend. So what better way to show your love to your feathered, furry, spiny, or scaly companions than with a hand embroidered portrait that you made yourself? If you think that sounds cool, then stick around because in this video, I'll be sharing all about my new book, Embroidered Animal Portraits, and showing you some of the projects you can make with it. This book is suitable for both those who are just beginning their embroidery journey, as well as those who have already been here for a little while. I start by covering all of the basics, such as supplies, beginner stitches, how to get started, and more. I also share how to embroider realistic looking fur, feathers, spines, and scales. Now the book has 12 detailed patterns for you to follow that cover a wide range of animals, like from a hamster all the way to a bearded dragon. And if you think a bearded dragon embroidery sounds really hard, don't worry, you can practice by stitching the ball python pattern first. Each pattern in this book comes with a full color guide, a stitch direction guide, and a comprehensive series of step-by-step -step photos for you to follow along with. However, if you're looking to embroider a portrait of your own pet and not one of the patterns, then there's something for you too. I also cover how to create your own detailed embroidery pattern and how to choose colors that best represent your pet. Or you could practice the patterns in the book and then take what you've learned and create your own portrait of a similar animal. Like there are hundreds of species of birds you can stitch with what you'll learn about feathers. And you can make other small mammals such as chinchillas, sugar gliders, gerbils, or even squirrels with what you'll learn about stitching fur. Take what you learn about stitching scales and embroider other kinds of lizards, snakes, and fish. The possibilities are endless. I hope you're as excited about this book as I am. Now, let's take a look at all the projects you can make by following along with embroidered animal portraits. The first project that you'll come across is of this black rabbit. It's a really great one to practice blending and shadows and highlights with, and it's also very easily customizable. Next, there is this little hamster, which is also very customizable. And as you can see, this project includes a really cool wreath accent. There's a separate pattern for this wreath that you could actually add to any of the other portraits in the book. Next, you'll come across this really adorable guinea pig. This is a great project to practice your fur with because her fur is going every sort of which way. After that, we have this little gray rat. This is a fun portrait that extends all the way down to the edge of the hoop and it's a really great exercise for blending two different tones of similar colors. Then there is this ferret. This project is a little more difficult than the previous ones because there's a lot of tiny stitches that you use to blend the lighter and darker colors together. Next you'll come across this hedgehog, and I know the spines or the quills can look very intimidating, but they're definitely manageable if you just take your time and work in small sections. The last project with fur is this beautiful brown horse. This one has a lot of blending, but it's really good practice for using those tiny blending stitches to slightly change the undertone of the thread. The first feathery project we have is this chicken. The feathers are quite large, so you really get to explore the texture. This piece actually has several different types of stitches in it, and you can see an example of that if you look at the texture of the chicken's comb and waddles. Next, there is this little budgie or parakeet. This is a great example of how you can create the idea of feathers without having to stitch every single feather. Also, you get to embroider these really cool looking branches. Now for scales, you can practice creating that scaly texture with the ball python project. The color palette for this one is pretty basic, so you can really focus on getting that look of scales just right. 
Then there is this beautiful betta fish surrounded by some fun little bubbles. This fish has a lot of texture. The fins can be quite complicated, so make sure you take your time with them. And finally, there is quite possibly the hardest project in the book, the bearded dragon. This piece also incorporates several different stitches, which you can see between the bearded dragon's scaly texture and the smooth log and the little bits of moss. I hope you enjoyed seeing the projects in this book and are looking forward to learning how to embroider something new. If you're interested in keeping up with me and my work, new releases, or my embroidery mentorship program, you can follow me online at Stitching Sabbatical or go to stitchingsabbatical.com. You can also join my Facebook group called Hand Embroidered Pet Portraits and share your own animal embroidery. You can chat with other people who are working on their own projects and find a lot of great resources too. And don't forget to pick up your copy of Embroidered Animal Portraits. Happy stitching!